So we're just out in the rain doing a little bit of exploratory work. You can see you have an uh, outcrop here. Nothing's really exposed though because of all the overgrowth. And we think that there's a couple showings coming through here. Pulling out some oxidized material. You can see some quartz there that's very deteriorated bedrock right there and uh, what we want to do is we're just going to dig some test pits and we're going to see if there's anything in it any samples we can pull out and then we're going to head down a bit over here where we found some bedrock exposed and a showing that we've actually had tested and it was about two to three percent copper which is kind of indicative of us being on the outside of a deposit based on all the other showings in this area. Similar host rock and mineralization as well too to the outskirts of the deposits. So uh, let's get to digging. We did a little digging here on a little showing and we've actually located this up in the forest up here on a uh, old road that's about 70 years old dug it out of bedrock you can see the same kind of mineralization so you can see how oxidized it is you can see the white stuff there that's deteriorated quartz with uh, iron pyrite and here off the bedrock these samples a little hard to see because of the water but all this Right here is mineralized. You can see all that. And these are running about two to three percent copper. It's mostly iron pyrite, but you obviously have the calcopyrite in there, which has given you your copper values. Right there. So another decent little showing. I'm sure this opens up and uh, is definitely wider and we've actually found the same kind of material in the road going all the way down to where my truck was. So this is probably another wide zone. Another showing here. You got uh, some gossinous rock. This looks like a schistose rock and possibly sericite schist. But if you take a look in here, you got a nice vein which contains iron pyrite. So we'll chip away a little of this. See what it looks like. There's a bit more over here too. See how oxidized this is. So this has some pyrite on that too. You take a look. About uh, 30 feet away. Same rock type in here. Same rock type right in there. But then when you get to here, you got a transition from right here to here. And this is more of a shale type rock. So somewhere along here, there's a contact, most likely about right in here. And looks like your mineralization is formed just to the right of the contact. Right here. So this is a bit of the host rock beside it. You 
can see pyrotization. Pretty disseminated evenly. Here's a few more samples. You can see some nice pyrotization. Nice samples. So quite a few samples beside the contact area between the two host rocks. Lots and lots of pyrite. We got one more interesting area here. You can see how oxidized it is. Again, there's lots of disseminated pyrite in these. So this is probably the last area we're gonna have time to look at because it's starting to get dark, but you can see a nice little vein of iron sulfides in there exposed in the bank here and uh, a couple meters away it's exposed again you have disseminated pyrite with a chloratized schist and if you go down a bit farther it's exposed and you can see you got massive iron pyrite in a vein about 40 centimeters wide. So we're just going to expose this a little bit and uh, hammer a couple samples off. It's a nice little showing. Okay, so we hammered a few off, got some nice semi-massive pyrite, these schists are very chloratized. Anyway. It's starting to snow on us, so we got to head out. Hope you guys enjoyed the short little video. We'll see you next time.